Y'all are the sorriest group of pledges I have ever seen. Gerard McMurray's Burning Sands explores the darker sides of hazing in a black fraternity. The film's ending leaves us in a bleak and somewhat ambiguous place. But we got the opportunity to ask the director and cast about what really happened in this ending and what we should take away from the film. Obviously, this is going to involve spoilers. I pledged a black fraternity. I also went to a black university. Uh, so the, the DNA of the story come, definitely comes from within me. Um, and I thought I wanted to explore that world. I think Burning Sands leaves us in a very realistic spot. So everybody will have a different take on what is coming next. The important thing is where are we gonna step next? That's that thing of holding up the mirror and you reflect on it. Zurich and his pledge brothers prepare for Hell Night, the culmination of their brutal hazing process. Zurich has been struggling under the pressures of hazing. He lost his girlfriend after he was forced to pretend to have sex with another girl. Your bra's calling. He's failing to complete his schoolwork and his ribs are so battered from beatings that another strong hit could actually kill him. Just stay away from blows to the ribs or you end up on the operating table. But things are starting to look up. Zurich turned in his paper on Frederick Douglass and he's rejuvenated as he speaks to his fellow brothers about self-respect and respecting each other. We come from kings and queens, man, not slaves. You, 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 kings. As they head toward Hell Night, we expect the worst for Zurich's health. Welcome to Hell Night, fellas. What the hell are you doing? And Zurich does get hit in the ribs as we feared, but he's hanging in. Then the big brothers order the pledges to eat dog food. Zurich's friend Frank starts spitting it up, so Zurich tries to help his friend finish the food. The brothers pull Zurich off to start beating him, at which point Frank tries to rescue Zurich from that beating. And this leads the brothers to beat Frank even harder. We see Zurich taking such hard blows to his ribs at this point that he cries out in pain. He's clapped over the ears and the sound shifts to signal the intense pain. We think this might be the end for him. But that end doesn't come, and we look over to see the big brothers beating Frank until he falls to the ground and starts foaming at the mouth. Get up, Frank! The action ceases as everyone realizes that Frank needs emergency attention. And throughout the story, you think it's gonna go one way, but then towards the end, it just takes a whole different turn, and you never really saw it coming. The Big Brothers order the pledges to- You dumb me, you leave and watch out for cameras. Cover your faces, cover your place. Has this happened before? Take your fucking boy and go. Come on, we gotta go! Come on! But Zurich uncovers his hood and realizes he can't leave his friend, regardless of the consequences, and his pledge brothers join him. After Frank is carried into the hospital, we conclude on this slow, shaky track in to Zurich in the waiting room. The first question that pops into our mind is, of course, is Frank dead? We hear the doctors speaking in the background. The kid didn't make it. Traumatic aortic rupture. He didn't have a chance. Has someone contacted the university? The police are on their way. Definitely Frank is dead, but instead of showing like the uh, repercussions of it, I wanted the audience to make their decision. This barely audible dialogue, the kid didn't make it, sure he didn't have a chance, is all we get to tell us that Frank has died, and there will be massive fallout for the fraternity, university, and individuals involved. But we don't see any of that fallout. The camera instead stays with Zurich to feel his grief after he's not been able to save the friend he considered a brother. After this movie of almost all wide shots, we arrive at a close-up, not too dissimilar from the opening close-up. So that after the wide shots, which focus for most of the movie on the group as a whole, we end with a closer window into Zurich's psychology. That was our last shot yeah. out of, out of, out of, in our last mm -hmm. scene. So we shot it in a sequential order from Hell Night to, to that part. So it, it gave him really that, that connection emotionally to really yeah. go there. So when we were shooting that scene, so we talked about him, like, about him losing a brother and how would you really respond to it. And we see that empty seat at the end. Yeah. And like, think about, you know, he would be there for you, but now he's not. So whatever how you would really feel, just let it, let it be and let it be natural. He finally calls his father, whose messages he's been avoiding all week. Hey, Pops. And we cut to black. Throughout the film, his, his dad's kind of in contact with him. He can't, you know, he knows something is going on, but he's not quite sure really what yeah. the, what's going on now in this in time. And I think just having just having that call and having a moment at the end really says something about fault to some relationships and, and definitely specifically black men and yeah. their fathers. For me, when I was playing the character, talking to my dad may have swayed me one way or the other, and I felt like this was my journey. This was my decision. I had to do it my way. And I feel like if my dad was on the phone and was like, you know, maybe you shouldn't, I would listen to him. Or maybe if he's like, continue, but I want it to be on me. The second question that comes into our mind is, what's Zurich going to do now? 
Given the call to his father and the backstory we know that his father never finished pledging Lambda Phi. My pops couldn't finish. Dropped. I'm gonna prove it's worth it. His father didn't, you know, finish crossing the line, and that was always a thing that I think he wanted to prove to himself, you know. I'm not like my father, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out here, I'm gonna go through. But then, even though while he's going through it, he's still having these conflicts, like, is it worth it? We gather that Zurich is calling him to say he's not going to cross the burning sands, that he's not going to continue with the fraternity. In the moment he decided to expose his face and remain at the hospital to wait for news on Frank, he chose that brother over the brothers of Lambda Phi. He's rejected the moral code of this fraternity that would leave one of theirs to die just to protect themselves from repercussions. He's had to stay strong for his brothers and for himself. I feel like, you know, he, he knows that he can do it and he wants to stay strong, but his world broke down. And that's kind of just where I was. Like if I lost a family member and especially in the circumstance where I was, I was at college, like it would be traumatic. I think he definitely changed his mind. You know, we revealed our identity. So he, we already have like, it's done now. Like, that was the final draw. I don't think he stays at all. I think that that I think that that was yeah, that's the end. Zurich discovers in his hazing process that the fraternity he's always dreamed of joining is actually a toxic environment that abuses its new members to an extreme. But Zurich does find true brotherhood in the bond he forms with his fellow pledges. They learn how strong they are and they commit to each other. Yeah, I'll come with you, man. I got you, bro. Frank dies because he tried to help Zurich, who had just tried to help him. So Frank's death underlines what's wrong with the fraternity system as it's portrayed by McMurray. Zurich and Frank have become true brothers, but the Lambda Phi brothers beat them and kill one of them as punishment for their trying to help each other. What this kind of hazing process is enforcing is not brotherhood and self-respect and equality, but a hierarchy, a pecking order in which the lower must obey the higher without any autonomy or respect granted to him. We need to change and we need it now because the lives of our students and the honor of this fraternity is at stake. Zurich struggles to reconcile his admiration for Lambda Phi as he's imagined it and their treatment of him and his pledge brothers as dogs or slaves. And this is where Frederick Douglass comes in. The Frederick Douglass rhetoric about slavery and enslaving ourselves weaves through the film, underlining the complexity of identity for these characters. Young, middle-class black men, hardworking and ambitious, yet confronted with an environment that's unhealthy and dangerous. With the Douglass passages, McMurray criticizes the fraternity's mindset, with the message that escaping slavery also means rejecting any system of masters and slaves, and resisting the temptation to oppress or subjugate ourselves and others. When Frederick Douglass is talking, or I'm narrating throughout the story, I there's no struggle, there's no progress. It's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. I feel like it's, it's what's in the back of my head as I'm going through these things. It's like, if I'm saying these words, but I'm going through this, wh wh you know, where am I going with this? Am I, am I gonna agree with this side of me that's gonna, you know, stay quiet or the side that's inside of me that's speaking? Frederick Douglass has always been an inspiration to me. And when I was developing the screenplay, I, I thought I would introduce Frederick Douglass with the history of him going through slavery and breaking free, tied to the themes of this film. I think he was a very honorable man, and he's, in, in, this, in the story, Zerg is trying to be the honorable man where Frederick Douglass was, so he was a good person to really model for my character. If we ever get free from the oppressions and wrongs heaped upon us, we must pay for the removal. We must do this by labor, by suffering, by sacrifice, and if needs be, by our lives and the lives of others. But this story doesn't want to talk about the history of slavery. Instead, the movie tries to show the complicated legacy of slavery that continues to impact black Americans and all our society on every level, from socioeconomic realities to the intimate psychology of individuals. I think Burning Sands is a, a window into African-American life uh, that the public hasn't seen before. Another question raised by the ending is, what's the social message the film leaves us with? Is McMurray condemning hazing or fraternities outright? Or is it more open-ended? In the end, the movie isn't anti-fraternity, since the lesson the pledges learn is true brotherhood with each other. Burning Sands comes from McMurray's own experiences, and McMurray says he would pledge all over again. I would pledge 100% again. I mean, I had no problem with issue because again, pledging is almost like a process you go in the military and 
uh, a police force, or a fireman, they all have a process. I'm not saying anything bad should happen, but it's always a process with everything. Um, so I, for me, I would definitely will do it again because it, it made me the uh, person I am today. The problem, as presented by the movie, is the extremes that hazing can be taken to as fraternities lose track of what it's supposed to be about. Inherent in this discussion is the concern of masculinity, especially for black Americans, and how to make masculine bonding a positive force rather than a toxic influence that pressures and harms other young men. It brings up the life of the black middle class. Most of the stories that we see, I don't see my brother in it, I don't see my father, my uncle, I don't see the majority of men in my life reflected in those, but I see in this. So when you say lives matter, you really are not just saying it because it's a no-brainer and it's right, but you feel invested because you've been shown, because you've been moved. It's good to see African Americans going to college and experiencing that life, having moments and educating ourselves because we're tired of seeing ourselves as slaves sometimes, you know? Maybe we want to go to school. Bernie Sands underlines the core of what a fraternity should be. What are the principles of the fraternity? Leadership, scholarship, compassion, and brotherhood. All right, because that's something you're going to have to live by the rest of your life. Brotherhood whether it's bound by Greek letters or forged through shared experiences. Respect and love between equals and a willingness to do anything for each other. 